cancers welcome to my channel <laughs> look at these cards already so i premeditate and shuffle prior to going on camera so whatever comes out that's um you know your cards are charged and ready to be read we have the king of wands sagittarius aries or leo person we have a ace of wands new beginnings and we have king of swords and then we have you freeing yourself with the eight of swords in reverse good stuff let's get to these messages keep in mind that these are general so you want to receive what resonates sun moon rising venus jupiter and mars have good general messages Ooh. um thug in reverse <laughs> okay all right sun moon rising venus jupiter and mars north south east and west sun moon rising venus jupiter and mars for your trim what i need to see for cancers accurate general messages here at ortiz apple tree for cancers water quaternal sign man and woman north south east and west accurate general messages please for cancers okay and fake busy sun moon rising venus jupiter and mars north south east and west accurate general messages please for cancers sun moon rising venus jupiter and mars accurate general messages here at ortiz apple tree we have here moving on, letting go, and loving you, and free. And then we have shady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Let's get into these messages. Just keep in mind that these are very general. Again, very general. So receive what resonates and leave what does not. All right, Cancers. Let's get into it. We're starting off here with the Ace of... Um, well, yeah, we do have the Ace of Wands, but we also have the King of Wands. And this is someone I feel like you have left in the dust of your indifference because everything is happening behind this person's back. So I feel like this is an energy where you were dealing with someone who may have tried to manipulate you or control you. It's an energy where someone could have been, um, you know, I don't know. You could, this person worries about other people's opinion of you. They worry about other people's opinion of themselves. And they're kind of like afraid to be different and just step outside of their comfort zone, but not for you, Cancers. I feel like, you know, you're not about someone trying to control you. This is someone who even may have used bullying tactics. Like, you know, and I feel like you're dealing with someone who is a manipulator, someone who is impulsive. This person could be aggressive, stubborn, very egotistical, and downright nasty. They may have a temper as well. Could be a fire sign who's weak and unreliable, undependable, ineffective, and they break promises that they make. So for some of you, this is someone who I feel like you've left in the dust of your indifference. Maybe this was a womanizer. And I'm just feeling this energy of a reversal energy because of the energies that's all around it. Shady, thug and reverse, fake. And I feel like you're being free from this person's influence, the influence they once had over you. It is no longer, it is very unrequited. And I just feel like you're not overburdened by this person trying to control your life. You know, I feel like you're very self-sufficient and you've overcome your fears, just as simple as that. And now guess what? There's a new beginning. There's a new beginning. You're gonna get good news. And I feel like some of you are going to be physically starting something. Maybe you're physically getting back into working out. Maybe you're physically starting to travel. Finding a new passion. I feel like there's some type of creative spark happening with you. And you're accepting the challenge, Cancers. It's fun. It's being bold and daring. And it's a new lease of life that this Ace of Wands is bringing this energy into your life. It's like a spark. Very creative as well. And for some of you, you could be meeting someone that opens up up a new chapter in your love life that brings in a relationship that brings a new lease of life to you like getting engaged or married or buying a house moving you know going traveling together or even having a baby congratulations cancers um so it's a beautiful energy here of lots of fun and excitement and as i hold this card i'm like feeling the spontaneous energy <laughs> i'm like feeling the action and the passion and you getting fired up so expect some fun and sexy nights and i feel like um, you know, if there's someone that you're interested in, buy the bullet. Go for it. Let them know you're interested in them. Jump in. Let them know you like them. Things will go well, okay? I feel like good news in relation to work, new energy, enthusiasm, and drive coming in. You know, if you're job hunting, um, a new job or career path is going to open up to you. A new challenge in your current job, maybe a promotion or a project you're going to take on. And I feel like you're going to come up with lots of creative ideas and thinking outside of the box. And it's a beautiful energy because 
financially, your finances will change for the better. And it could take the form of gifts, winning, inheritance, or a good return on investment or unexpected income. So that's really something great to look forward to, Cancers, right? And then we have the Two of Wands. So I feel like for some of you, there's going to be like an energy where you could go traveling. You could, um, it's a choice that you're going to have to make, you know? You're going to have a choice between two options. And, you know, you're going to remember that the grass is not always greener on the other side. But I do feel like it's a choice. You have two paths here that's going to open up to you. For some of you, you can um, have an opportunity to do overseas travel, whether it's for work or for pleasure. For some of you, it's uh, sudden departures, like immigration for some of you. That's exciting, right? But some of you may decide to go. Some of you may decide to stay. But I do feel like it's going to be an energy where, um, with this fire, sign I feel like you became very withdrawn and detached from this person and once you withdrew and you detached your energy energy from this person who wanted to control you and dominate you I feel like that's when a new chapter of all this passionate creative energy opens up to you the two of wands is like um, there was a lack of commitment with this fire sign possibly you know they had you feeling restless so you withdrew you detached and and rightfully so this person could have been cheating you know they could have had a choice with between other people and so I feel like you're not being strung along and if it's not a fire sign it could have been somebody with the same energy so I just feel like um cancers you might even have a choice between two lovers even <laughs> and you might be looking at the situation like you're torn between one lover gives you security and the other one is younger and fun and gives you adventure so you're gonna find that there's two potential partners one is steady one is older one is reliable and the other is younger and daring and fun so I mean hey you can't keep them both or maybe you can but there's two paths available to you cancers for work as well i feel like you're gonna have a choice between staying in your current job or career or taking a new job or career path i just feel like um you may have your pick between two positions in a current company, or if you um, have your own business, you may be choosing whether or not to expand or to link up or partner with another company or to take it global, like online. You know, this is financial stability, though. So I feel like you're going to be finding your financial balance as well. Now, we do have the King of Swords energy here. And this is an energy where it's like structure and routine is also going to be prominent in your life. For some of you, it's um, strength. You know, it's a lot of discerning energies. It's a lot of energy where it's head over heart and you're using your head. For some of you, this could be legal matters going in your favor as well and freeing you from someone. For some of you, um, you're, it's, it's getting out of jail. For some of you, you're finishing your community service work. For some of you, it's like, look, the... the the, the um, handcuffs are like open and you're free to go. You're, you've served your time. Whether that be um, a spiritual karmic, you know, imprisonment time you have to deal with. I feel like some of you have served your time and now there's a new chapter. There's a new beginning here with the Ace of Wands. So some of you, it's mind over matter. It's head over heart. Okay. It's logic and reason and integrity you're looking for as well with ethics and morals. I feel like this could be legal matters as well. And I feel like you're going to be cool, calm, and collected, and self-disciplined, and very honest and strong. And it's going to go in your favor as well. I just feel like for some of you, this is um, a fair-minded energy. You know, responsibilities. I feel like in playing by the rules. Now, some of you may meet an air sign. Could be Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra. This person could work in the legal field. This could be a lawyer. This could be a judge. This could be someone military or someone a veteran or someone who um, a security officer. But this is someone who um, is very intellectual, and you're going to connect with this person on an intellectual level, physical and emotional, but also more intellectual. And I feel like this is someone who is going to challenge you to excel and maintain those high standards and that's good right for some of you this would make for a very good father figure in your life um, or a father figure to your children stepfather or something like that if you're planning a family um, for some of you this is an energy where um, this person you know you need a partner 
that's going to connect with you on an intellectual level, cancers. And this person is, it could be a happy person. Like this could be a bachelor or a bachelorette. They're just happy, happily single. And that's even better. You know, if a person's happily single, more than likely they're going to bring that happiness that they already have with themselves into a connection and share happiness together. So I feel like if you want a relationship, be aware that this person will not settle for a partner who cannot hold their own interests. So I feel like you're going to be able to meet this person's high standards standards and they're going to be able to meet yours as well so cancers we have here the eight of swords in reverse and this is again escape or freedom whether it be physically legally or spiritually you're free you're free okay i'm hearing the song by mary mary um Take the shackles off my feet so I can dance i just want to praise you i just want to praise you you broke the chains, now I can lift my hands, and I'm gonna praise you. So go ahead and thank God right now for freeing you from whatever karmic cycle you had been going through, whatever legalities you have been dealing with. I feel like you're coming out on top. You're coming out strong. You're coming out vindicated, justified. I feel like you're gonna win. And I feel like it's an energy where you're gonna finally be like free, okay? Free, where this person cannot hold you hostage to their vindictive, manipulative revenge. They can't control you. I feel like finding solutions and options and taking control of your life. Some of you really stood up to someone who was abusive and abuse is not necessarily physical. It could be emotional, financial, you know, spiritual. So I feel like you're a survivor. Some of you, I'm a survivor. I will not give up. I'm going to survive. I will work harder. You're facing your fears, right? And I feel like there's truth. You're releasing anxiety. Like, again, there's an end of punishment. There's an end of depression. There's an end of oppression. There's an end and there is a beginning on the table, okay? So, you know, it's relief from pressure, releasing anxiety. Um, this is a beautiful energy because you have so much self-belief within yourself that you're able to ignore criticism. You're, you're able to take back control. And I feel like you're going through in this new chapter, going towards the stump this summer with a clear mind, feeling empowered and mentally strong cancers and hopeful. Like, oh my gosh, you're really ready. <laughs> I feel like for some of you, um, you know, it's overcoming obstacles. And, and I feel like, you you know, if you were unhappy or you were abused, I feel like you've healed, you've even forgiven, and you've let go because we have moving on, letting go, and loving yourself and free, you know, free, yes, okay, you're free, you're so free. Oh, so it's an energy where, you know, um, depression will not have a negative effect on you anymore. I feel like you are taking back your power and you are letting go of any fear and anxiety and you should be feeling empowered and hopeful in relation to love. And that's why God feels like you're ready. And that's why this Ace of Wands is here. Oh, yes, lots of, you know, if you don't want any kids, better protect yourself, cancers and key. I feel like some of you are getting out of the house, too. You know, we're naturally homebodies as cancers, you know. We love making our home, our kingdom, our domain. And I feel like some of you are going to be getting out and, and taking in that breath of fresh spring and summer air and getting out and being seen and having fun under the sun. And let me tell you here, that we have fake busy but I feel like this is not this is not a fake busy. It's in reverse, right? Because you know there there's a difference. Um, there there is a difference between busy and productive. And while many people believe being productive is the same as being busy, the reality is that the two are very different. Okay, so productive people they, we tend to think that you know we don't waste time doing just one task. A productive person prioritizes the things that they need to be done, and it means they have less work to do each day and have a greater sense of achievement at the end of the day. And that's you. Like I said, with this King of Swords, very structured, very organized, okay? And you don't waste your time because you really value your time and you value people who also value your time as well. I feel like busy people however, on the other hand, are more concerned with the difference between detail and it's like 
you know, it's like the detail of A and B. So it's important to pick one and walk. I feel like on the other hand, productive people focus on being effective and efficient. They know how to manage and plan their time to prioritize the most important tasks, while the busy person spends all their time researching, finding out about possibilities, making lists, trying to perfect things before they even start. And as a result, busy people fill their diaries with things that occupy them but change nothing in their lives. They know that too many yes sayers are the wrong things. Even when they are small, it can lead them down the wrong path. But a busy person... Yeah, and, and, and to say a busy person starts like a blog that takes up three times as much time and effort as a productive person and they complain about they don't have enough time to get things done. But in this way, you can focus on one topic and jump back and forth throughout the day. You could say that this kind of work or project consumes your time and energy and is less interesting than turning your attention to major projects, initiatives, and goals. But it's easy to become too preoccupied with yourself, but doing such things can make all the difference in the results that you are trying to achieve. It's not a badge of honor to be busy, no matter how many things you do in a day, okay? Busy people think it's the right way to do more work in eight or nine hours. And then they add as many tasks to their to-do list as possible and they move most of their tasks to the next day. And they tend to take on all or nothing approach. And then it comes to planning how they will work each day to achieve the most important things. And their actions are driven by a conscious decision to achieve a certain result while busy people always prepare for that result. Now, productive people know they don't need 40 tasks on their to-do list. Busy people try to put everything on an endless to-do list, taking on projects, making promises they can't keep, and then they have good intentions, but they can't they can't keep up with it. So they, they complain about not having enough time or being tired at the end of the day. And so businessmanship, yes, I just made up a word, businessmanship is fueled by perfectionism, while productivity is fueled by intent. So I feel like some of you have really great intent. And you know, one of the most important steps in your transformation from a busy person to a productive person, cancers, is to let go of your perfectionism. Okay, <laughs> so being busy means working hard, but being productive also means working hard. When you run out of time, ask yourself what your priorities are. If you can only do 15 to 20 things in one day, you have to reassess your priorities because being productive means not only doing most things, but also doing the right things. You see, productive is obliged to focus on one thing while busy chases the illusion of multitasking, okay? Productively focusing on fulfilling the most important tasks with the greatest influence. So the checkpoints of the off to-do list, the checkpoints off the to-do list, you go home satisfied, or if you work from home, you're at the end of the day, you're satisfied, you have no small sense of achievement. The mission of productive work is to try to reach the crucial milestones needed to achieve a goal. Because productive focuses on one task after another and careful not to forgive avoidable mistakes. So, um, <laughs> So the interesting thing is that you can be very busy for a whole day and still feel that you are not productive, right? But this busy is in reverse fake busy. You're not fake busy. You're not just busy. You're productive. You see, busy people check their emails all day long. They're interrupted with their phone. You know, urgent people pick up the phone, but they don't answer every single email in their inbox. Busy people tend to start their day by checking their emails, returning home, having the rest of the day, you know, and I feel like productive people, they don't focus on responding to emails. They have systems in place to help them process their emails. So my question is, are you busy or productive, Cancers? <laughs> I hope you were following me on that. I'm very productive, okay? And I have a lot of structure and routine that keeps me that way. But I feel like for some of you... Um, you're really letting go and you're moving on and you're loving you and you're free. Like you are not held hostage to your past anymore. You're not held hostage to other people's expectations and beliefs of you. I feel like for some of you, you know, our first loss taught us how hard letting go was. And letting go is not only about the person or thing, but it's also the memories, the joy and tears and time and especially the connection. So that's moving on is not about 
not being stuck in, in, in despair and continuing your life afterwards. On the other hand, letting go is much more difficult and complicated to be done, but liberating feeling at the end of the journey is rewarding because it's more than just, there's, there's, I've learned that moving on is actually one of the steps of letting go. Okay, it's, it's not being stuck in despair and continuing your life, but moving on completely and knowing that, you know, shit happens, giving yourself time and space to grieve, you know, forgiving whoever you think did you wrong. And, you know, um, sometimes it helps to have like counselor, you know, if there's unfinished trauma, um, it's good to talk it out. Sometimes it's good to talk to someone that, like a professional where you can share your stories, your burdens and express your way out of it. But um, moving on and letting go is so important and, and loving yourself because, you know, um, you're able to ask for help. And when you ask for help, it doesn't mean you're weak. It means you're wise. You know what I mean? And that some of you are just it's so beautiful that you are able to forgive because when you forgive, you know, please include yourself in the list of people who you want to forgive. We, we tend to blame, then torture ourselves with that thought, you know. So I feel like it's not about just forgiving others, but it's also about forgiving yourself. It's also about forgiving yourself, you know. Maybe you were young and you didn't know any better then. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Forgive others. And that alone frees you as well. We should forgive. It doesn't mean we have to forget, but... We better be smart and kind to ourselves with learning a lesson and having the lesson learned, right? Hatred never does good for us. It just holds us back into, it, it holds us hostage to the past. It keeps us stuck. It, it keeps us holding on to toxic energy and grudges, which also, you know, can affect our health. So I feel like letting go is definitely, um, forgiveness is definitely one of those, um, one of the ways of letting go and um, giving yourself that time. I feel like some of you have really given yourself that time. You've been able to free yourself like from other people's expectations, other people's influence, your own you know, self-limiting um, energies. I feel like you've freed yourself. You, you've released yourself. You found a way to escape and free yourself and take back your power and accept that you know, bad things happen to good people sometimes. And um, that's a reality. And you know, um, you know, you never want to, you know, get stuck in denial. So I feel that denial changes us. It affects our, our unintentional uh, energy. And I feel like for some of you, denial is a lie and betrayal that we do to ourselves over and over again until we are so used to it. So if lying to ourselves and betraying ourselves, you know, it keeps us stuck. But I... Uh, <sighs> I don't even want to stay stuck on the negative because I feel like you're you're past that. Because right here it says loving you. So self-love cancers. And I'm I'm really staying, I'm trying to really stay um not going into the darkness because I feel like some of you are really walking into the light. And self-love is where you have appreciation of self, positive regard for yourself. I feel like it's related to your self-esteem, your self-compassion. And, you know, when you have a strong sense of self-love, you understand your own value. You treat yourself in a loving way. And it's it's not like being a narcissism. It, a narc, it's, it's not like a narc. It's like, you know, a narcissism is like excessive self-absorption and self-interest and self-love is a positive trait. Because loving yourself means having a good understanding of both your strength and your weakness. You know, and narcissism, that's associated with poor mental health. But high self-love has a positive effect on your well-being and your mental fitness and your overall relationships. And self-love is so critical to our overall well-being. And despite what the perfectionists say, loving yourself doesn't mean that you don't hold yourself to a high standard. Uh, without feeling positive towards yourself, you may find it hard to be motivated. So in order to take action and take chances with this new beginning God has given you, you got to take on new opportunities. The importance of loving yourself, it, it motivates you much more than, um, uh, you know, being a perfectionist. I feel like, I don't want to, like I said, I want to stay on the positive and not really dwell on the negative because I feel like those are lessons you've already been there, done that and learned from. So self-love 
you know, it's so important because it motivates much of our positive behavior. That's why I want to say I'm the positive. And it reduces harmful behavior. It empowers you to take risk and say no to things that don't work for you. It empowers you to build self-compassion. Like self-love helps you take care of yourself. It lowers your stress. It strives for success. It gets you back in the gym. It gets you out of the house for a breath of fresh air. You know, it, 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 it protects you. Self-love protects you from negative thoughts. It protects you from self-sabotaging and, pu and pu punishing yourself and pushing yourself too far. And it's important to recognize that knowing when to say no is just as important as learning when to say yes. So the benefits of self-love, lower stress, higher resilience, your willingness to take risks, the good kind of risk that is, <laughs> um, empathy, you know, you're able to see yourself and accept your strength and your weakness and compassion and appreciation of yourself. And then you can also have that energy towards others and um, and self-efficiency, you know, um, self-efficiency. It's a beautiful thing because it's like you own mastery experiences and you've learned from karmic lessons and you mastered your own emotions and you're able to set boundaries, you know. There's a saying that a dishonest yes to something you don't really want to do is an honest no to yourself. So we often think that saying yes to everything and always willing to help is a virtue. However, a key part of self-love is knowing what to give your energy to and what doesn't serve you. And what doesn't serve you is shady people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so I said all that to say no to shady toxic people because when dealing with the, the shady person it's mentally draining and 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 i feel like you need those boundaries of self-love that protects you okay and we all know that person the one who leaves you feeling worse off after interacting with them so you know it's, it's a manipulative it could be a manipulative family member or a, a manipulative coworker, or a frenemy, you know. Um, so I feel like it's an energy of knowing when to say no, um, knowing, you know, when to avoid this type of person, you know, um, you know, knowing when to not get drawn in, you know, dealing with shady people, energy is exhausting. They constantly complain about others, they gossip a lot. Um, they can even accuse you of wronging them when you didn't do anything to wrong them. They just look for a reason to have a reason to hate you. You know what I'm saying? Resist the urge to jump on the complaining train. Resist the urge to feel like you need to prove a point or defend yourself. Nah, you don't need to defend yourself against accusations. The way they feel about you is not your problem, it's their problem, you know? You can just say, I'm sorry you feel that way, and you can leave it at that. <laughs> but pay attention to how they make you feel. You know, simply becoming a, more aware of how a shady person's behavior affects you can help you better navigate interacting with them. Because some people occasionally say rude or hurtful things that they don't mean, and no one feels their best all the time, and being in a bad mood can make you lash out. And this person could be lashing out. And that's not necessarily shady, but you got to ask yourself if put downs and lies or other types of emotional and verbal abuse characterize most of their interactions. You don't, you know, do they apologize for when they say something that they hurt you? Do they seem to notice how they say things that affects you? You know, so I feel like, um, you know, you know, you can talk to somebody about their behavior. You can, you know, if they're coming to you and they're gossiping at work about other coworkers, you can just be like, I feel uncomfortable when I hear unkind things about my coworkers. I won't participate in these kind of conversations. Or, you know, if a person's lying to you and trying to manipulate you, you can simply say, I value trust and friendship, so I can't continue this friendship if you continue to lie to me. So you put yourself first. On the flip side, um, put yourself first, you know, because other people's behaviors can be very damaging to you and exhausting. And I just feel like just, you know, healthy connections re it involve give and take, you know, not just take, not just one-sided. So I feel like um, valuing yourself, putting yourself first, offer compassion, but don't try to fix a shady person and know when to say no. Like I said, know when to move on, know when to let go and loving you, that self-love is like a boundary in itself. Say no and walk away. Okay. Um, so decide to say no and don't back down <laughs> and saying no to someone is saying yes to you. 
Okay, so remember, you're not at fault for people's shady, toxic behavior. Um, don't have anybody make you feel like you did something wrong, even when you know you didn't. You know what I mean? They just, they. just Some people are unhappy because they don't know how to let go. They don't know how to move on. They don't know how to love themselves. So they can envy you for simply knowing how to do that for yourself, Cancers. So you might have to, you know, sometimes remind yourself that their behavior has nothing to do with you. Restate your boundaries and try not to take their spite personally. Take deep breaths, calm yourself, mindfully acknowledge their words that they're talking to you and they're shady. But um, definitely don't, don't let them affect you. They're not, don't let anyone become a remote control to your life and affect your emotions. Make yourself unavailable to this type of person. You know, sorry, I have too much work to do. I'm not fake busy. I'm productively busy and I just don't have time. Sorry, I, I can't say no. You know, I got a meeting to tend to. I got to work. I, I work. I work. You know, I'm not just fake busy. I'm not busy. I'm not saying no because I can't. I'm saying no because I'm productively busy and I really, truly can't. So you might have to make yourself unavailable and limit your time with this person. And when you can't avoid the person, again, set boundaries because boundaries are essential for this new beginning. This new beginning, not everybody can go with you in this new beginning. And I feel like there's spiritual boundaries that are set in place as well for you. You're divinely protected, Cancers. You know, and setting boundaries involves deciding what you will and won't tolerate from these shady family members, friends, co-workers, frenemies, neighbors. Communicate your boundaries clearly and stick to them. You know? So I feel like you can have an exit strategy too. If you're stuck in a toxic conversation and you don't see a way out, you might worry that leaving some leaving seems rude or, you know, having having to go, but it's entirely, you know, I feel like it's up to you. You can just say, I'm sorry, but I have to stop you. I, I've got a lot of work, so I can't chat right now. Or sorry, I, I'm waiting on an important phone call and I got I got to get to this right now. So change your routine even, you know. Does a family member always catch you when you're studying or hold you up on your way to work? Or maybe a coworker always complains at lunch about how horrible everyone treats them. You can switch up the routine. That could help you avoid shady people getting pulled into gossip and conversations you'd rather skip. You can try eating lunch somewhere besides the break room. Or you can wear your headphones. Or you can read a book. You can avoid family members. And sometimes that's harder. But you can try having a respectful but firm conversation about needing to focus on your studies. Or like I said, you got to get back to work. You know, you got a casserole in the oven. You got to get to, you know what I'm saying? If you're on your way out the door, practice these quick exit strategies. You could be like, sorry, I'm late. I gotta go. You know what I'm saying? So, and then if these shady people keep coming in your face, you can encourage them to get help. You can seek help. You know, you can, you know, you can let them know maybe they can talk to a therapist. They can talk to a counselor to help them, but you are not licensed or trained. And don't get too personal. You know, toxic shady behavior can involve gossiping, oversharing personal details, using personal information to provoke reactions. And if you know someone that's shady and doing these things, keep your conversation light and insignificant. Shut down attempts at prying or oversharing with these shady people. I mean, you can, if they're trying to ask you about your money or trying to ask you about your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your love life, you can say, actually, I prefer not to talk about my relationship at work or I just prefer not to talk about my personal finances. You know what I'm saying? And then remain calm. Remain calm, stay grounded, you know? But the bottom line, sometimes cutting shady people out of your life may seem like the only way to escape their shady, toxic behavior, okay? Um, yeah. So with that being said, you know, I'm really proud of you, Cancers, freeing yourself mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically, freeing yourself from shady people, from their influences that they had over you. I feel like you have great potential power. And I'm going to end this by saying, Cancers, with this Ace of Wands, oh my gosh, like there's so much creative energy with your intellect and your analytical skills. Okay, because some of you might even have air in your chart. You're so intellectual. You can achieve great success, Cancers. I mean, people haven't seen the best of you yet. And you're going to shock some of these shady people. They're watching you. They're watching you on your social media. Like, they're, they're watching. Even when they act like they're not, they, they're watching. Okay, and they're wearing a freaking mask. Look at this. I'm so happy for you, Cancers. I'm so happy for you. No, they're not. They're jealous. They're envious. They're haters, okay?
Okay, but what do we say? Haters are motivators. And if you don't have any haters, you better find a way to get some. Okay? All right? So I feel like there's an energy here where it's great success. And you're going to be tapping into your inner creative energy and using it to your advantage. And um, this is logic and reason. And I feel like it's a very essential. Logic and reason. That's why the Ace of Wands is next to the King of Swords. Okay, trust in your abilities, Cancers. Take action. Don't be afraid to pursue your dreams. You got this. Okay. <laughs> All right, like, comment, share, and subscribe here at T's Apple Tree. And until next time, Cancers, take care.